We are going to learn about a basic setup for handling, debugging, and testing in your PHP scripts. This can help you get more work done and with better quality. You can use this setup in both procedural and object-oriented PHP applications. Also, you might find this handy for PHP applications that you have inherited and did not leave you any breadcrumbs for testing and debugging. We start by looking at the script serving as a central point for all debugging and testing. Consider it your debugging dashboard. At a minimum, you want a quick way to display key information about the running software environment, tests you are running, and debugging choices. For example, we are displaying the PHP versions both expected and detected. You want to add the same information for other libraries and technologies you are using as well, for example, a database like MySQL. You also want to see the PHP date and time settings for your target time zone and key PHP debugging settings. All of these we'll explore in the code. As you proceed with development, you then add links to the debugging dashboard for testing your code. The effort to design your code to run from one or more test links on the debugging dashboard forces you to build smaller, testable code units. For example, a database login script, you might add a link for a valid login, a link for an invalid username, a link for an invalid password, maybe a small form to let you try any testing values, and so on for all the tests that you need checking when your code changes. Also, you want a library for configuring your debugging environment. For example, you would use it to turn on and off debugging messages. When you go to deploy to other environments, such as staging or production, you can quickly visit the library and configure the debugging options appropriate for that environment. For example, you can turn on or off the PHP option to return its errors along with the content output. Something good for debugging, but not so good for your website visitors. Here you see that Earth, Moon, Copernicus, Crater City is not a valid time zone for the PHP date default time zone set function, and it classifies the error as a notice level error. You can see that notice level errors do not stop the execution of PHP scripts. Another notice level error that appears is for repeating the session start function. PHP has various levels of errors. PHP has warning level errors, such as this missing file in the include one statement. Warning level errors also do not stop execution of PHP scripts. You may have also encountered these errors, an undefined variable, an out of bounds array index offset, and a constant defined more than one time. Each of these appears as a PHP notice level error. In this iteration, the function do nothing is declared twice. This causes a fatal error and PHP terminates processing. Nothing is returned other than the fatal error message regardless of your debugging settings. Fatal errors must be fixed before you can continue coding or debugging or before you will see any notice and warning level errors. So far we saw the warning and notice PHP error level messages. If you find it helpful, you can filter the PHP error levels. This iteration only displays PHP warning level errors. Now we can look at some of the PHP code we have been executing. The first is the libcommon inc PHP file. I like having a file like this to centralize configuration values that impact all scripts. One item you should have in debugging is a way to find all places where debugging values need changing before publishing to production. I like to create a custom tag that I can use in a multiple file search. I use the tag production setting inside of double asterisk and then follow it with the values to use for production. I also include the tag's purpose in my code comments along with the various uses. You might find that the configuration file's first comment block is a good place for this documentation. The errors you saw demonstrated earlier are tucked away in the code comments so we can quickly reproduce them. For example, the date default time zone set function on line 26, and there is a test for the start session function on line 34. Another debugging item that can be helpful are constants for minimum version numbers. Line 32 is an example of the minimum PHP version needed. You might add similar version constants such as for database versions. Version constants can be helpful in both 
debugging, and useful in preventing live code running in the wrong environment. The contents of the configuration file should be relevant to the final production product. Avoid cluttering it with debugging specific configuration values. You can put them in another file and include them as we are doing here on line 17. So let's take a look at that file next. These are the common PHP settings you can use to help with your debugging efforts. On line 15, we are using the PHP any set function. It allows runtime changes to PHP configuration settings. The first argument identifies the configuration property you want to override. The display errors property lets you control the display PHP runtime error messages. You see the configuration properties value in the second argument. For the display errors property, the value of standard out or a value of one will show errors on a web page returned by PHP. Keep in mind standard out may not be a web page. It could be XML or JSON formatted data. If you have a PHP error message mixed into the data, then the receiving end would not successfully parse the data. For example, returning data to AJAX in a web page. AJAX would fail if the data did not meet its expected format because of PHP error messages. We will set line 15 to a value of 1 for debugging. Notice that line 13 is an example of the code comment search tag for setting production values. It documents setting the display errors property to 0 for production. In the same way, line 20 uses the any set function for PHP startup errors. There are ways to change your server environment or start PHP that can cause such errors. Hopefully, you will have a well-tested web hosting and PHP environment without startup errors, but it is a good place to look if all other debugging attempts fail. For debugging, let's change the startup error values to 1. On line 29, we are using the error reporting function to filter the types of error messages we want to see. The comments document PHP constants you can use for the error reporting function argument value. The constants can be used individually or combined as bytewise operations. More likely, you will use the minus 1 value or the E all constant equivalent for debugging. And then, as the code comment instructions indicate, use 0 to suppress all error reporting for production. We are going to set this to the PHP E all constant, and that is a common setting as you start out in your own project. You may find the others helpful if you inherit some bug-ridden PHP code or have so many errors and need a filter to proceed on their resolution. The last file we'll look at is the debug dashboard PHP file. It is the central file for testing and debugging. It works as a simple web page. We are using a hybrid of plain HTML code and PHP script mixed. You want to keep this code simple to avoid getting into the situation of debugging your own debugging code. On line 10, you see that we include the common library file. And you remember it includes the common debugging library file we just reviewed. And on line 36, you see we are displaying the PHP version constant from our common configuration library. Line 37, we are using the PHP version function to get the reading on the PHP version that is running. Then with some logic, we can alert ourselves if we do not have the correct version of PHP running. The key item on this line is the version compare function. Also, you want to have a reminder that you are using the correct time zone, and line 39 gives us that. Remember, the time zone was set in our common library. Then we are displaying the settings we have in the common debugging configuration library. Finally, we have some lines of code hidden in comments for observing these settings. Now we can try out some of these intentional errors and observe the results. First, let's try some of the tests we have in the common library file. Add a slash to the beginning of line 25 to activate the comment block code, and comment line 28 to get set up for the test. And when the debugging dashboard is open in a web browser, we see the error for line 26 in the common configuration file. PHP classifies the error as a notice, Still, the script completes as expected. The display of the data and the time worked, except it is more likely it is not for your time zone. Remove the slash we put on line 25 and uncomment line 28. 
Now add a slash to the beginning of line 33 to activate the second session start function. And the script completes, but shows that it's ignoring the error of having a second session start method. Now we can remove the slash at the beginning of line 33 to reset, and we can then start trying some of the error tests in the debug dashboard PHP file. Activate line 45 by adding a slash to the beginning of line 44. There is no file by the name of not a file.txt, so the include one statement should fail. And for our test, we receive two errors labeled as warnings. Now remove the slash we put on line 44 and add a slash to the start of line 48 for the undefined variable error. When reloading in the web browser, we see that the undefined variable produces a notice type error. Remove the first slash on line 48 to disable that test. Add a slash to the start of line 52 to expose the array index reference error. And another notice error is generated when reloaded in the web browser. On to line 57 and add a slash at the beginning. And reloading, we add a second notice level error. We are going to keep these two errors active for the next test. Add a slash to the beginning of line 62. There, we have a fatal error generated when we reload the page. If you turn off the display of PHP errors, the page would be blank. Up until now, warning and notice type errors did not prevent the script from completing. Notice also the PHP parser never got to the notice type errors that we left in the code. Let's demonstrate this with the same function name but having a parameter. Comment line 64, then uncomment line 65. And you see that the same error for redeclaring a function despite one declaration has a parameter and the other did not. That concludes the demonstration of a simple PHP debugging and testing library. I hope it will be helpful in your PHP projects. Mm -hmm.